Hello folks, Mink here with more Tabletop Simulator. And uh, yeah. Don't have much time to mic up these days, or opportunities. And I know I still have an episode of L.A. Noir to do. Which I didn't forget about. But, I'll get to it eventually. When that will be, who knows. It is what it is. But anyway, here we are. And, uh, I figured this time I would do one that's actually designed for single player. Here we have Deep Rock Galactic, the board game. And this is like the demo that you can play if you have Tabletop Simulator. It just finished its Kickstarter campaign and it was massively successful. And I did try, not this intro one that's already set up, I did try, uh, I think it was the next mission in the book. It's the same one that the uh, devs played in a video. And I thought it was okay. I didn't mind it. And when I did that one solo, I did two dwarves. And honestly, I thought it was a little easy. Maybe that's just because it was only two dwarves. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I figured this time I would try a different mission. And I would try using Bosco which I never did, so that should be interesting. But anyway, first of all, this board setup is alright. If you reorganize things, there's actually plenty of room on this table. I'll be honest, because I reorganized things on it, and I even had room to add things, but I don't know, that was just me. But uh, I also In time, I switched tables, which added even more room, especially for the player boards down here. Like these little nooks, I guess, are for cards. They don't perfectly fit in there. You could alter sizes and such. I didn't do that. I kept everything the same size that you see here on this board. I transferred it over to the one... I did, which I'll move to here in a bit, but I just wanted to show the uh, official mod as it is on the workshop, but uh, yeah, let's switch over to mine, which is right here, and you can see plenty of room. I know some people on the uh, the comments of the official mod said to go with the Kraken table and you can see you can get by well enough with just the custom rectangle you don't need the Kraken I don't understand the appeal of the Kraken honestly it's a little flashy for what it is but now if you need those two end tables that you can extend on the ends one over here and one over here then fine, go with the Kraken, but uh, this game in particular does not need it. But uh, anyway, you can see I added like boxes for creatures, I added discard piles. There's a reference sheet for the player, one for the creature, you can see this one has a state. I did for symbols, if they should appear in the game. And interesting note... I did, or not I did, but I saw while making this that the uh, effects on this sheet, well it's not really a sheet, it's from the, it's from the rule book, but uh, the effects in the rule book don't exactly match the effects on the card. Like uh, you can see even with the uh, inhibitor field the uh, little, uh, uh, I tried to move, the uh, 
like no smoking sign symbol there. It says effect lasts until the start of your next turn. Keep the card in front of you. Whereas the inhibitor card actually in the throwable thing says it lasts two rounds. And I'm assuming that's also why there's a number two on the actual thing. And you can flip it and then it's a one. So I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, I also took the opportunity to modify each rule book because if you noticed on the other table they were like big rectangle looking things and that's because after after the cover when you switched it would show two pages side by side and so it would like essentially double the size of the book I honestly didn't like that so I went in and modified each PDF so it's only one page per page instead of two per page. Which, interesting note, if you look at the page numbers at the bottom, right now it's on page five. Now you're at page eight. I don't know why. Somebody somewhere at Mood, I guess, uh, skipped a few pages or those pages aren't available for viewing for some strange reason I don't know I mean uh, I didn't miss those pages they're just not there they, they really don't exist <laughs> but uh that also transfers over into the mission book which you know fair enough if you want the uh, one mission per page then the old well not old but the uh official mod would have that whereas here you have the synopsis and the the objective and all and then the next page is your layout on the one that I did which I honestly don't mind at all you just set this up and then you switch it back and boom there you have your synopsis the objective and the mission specific event and it's right there but uh that's that. I also used the Kickstarter campaign as sort of a guideline to try to guess on certain things. Like I noticed it said 45 minerals and gold. So I did 15 each of Nitra, Gold, and Morkite. It also said 113 tokens and that was, that was a thing. I'm trying to figure out 113 tokens. I mean, I honestly don't know how they have those split up, but uh, in the official one, like I had six eggs, six apocablooms, and then four each of the loop bug, red sugar, and the uh, barley bulb, I think it is. I did five each for all of those. I, again, I'm just guessing. I did get rid of the two extra inhibitor fields which were added because the inhibitor field is actually it it occupies three spaces so that would make sense for them to be for there to be three but officially there's only one I don't know why but I also added two frozen things because all the pictures that I saw of the tokens always showed three and again, the cryo grenade occupies three spaces, so that makes sense. But why the frozen thing has three, but the inhibitor only has one, I, I don't know. Uh, ammo, I guessed, on there being, what is it, uh, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I did 25 primary, 20 secondary. I believe yes and I don't know how accurate that is again I don't know but anyway all told I believe that comes out to 110 everything is 110 that's including these uh, like the flares and the zip lines and the 10 weapon upgrades which are in this bag count them all up there's 110 and I was struggling to figure out where the other three could be and I 
I figured they weren't taking the stretch goals into account, which would mean that Bosco, the resupply pod, and the sentry gun would be the missing three tokens, which I'm not using on this particular board. Anyway, I'm hoping that's how it is. Uh, health cubes I made infinite. And that's because there's way more than enough. In the official dev playthrough of the game, I actually paused and counted all the health cubes. There were three players, so there was 15 already taken. And then there was one specific shot where they were like zoomed in kind of close when the uh, one guy was picking his throwable card, I believe. And it's right next to a, the pile of leftover health cubes. And I believe, in total, counting it, it came out to 41, which is, you know, that might as well be infinite. Anyway, I also reduced the amount of stalagmites, because the Kickstarter campaign said st 7 stalagmite tokens. And they got upgraded into 7 stalagmite minis. And in retrospect now, just saying that, I wonder if those seven stalagmite tokens count toward the 113, because I did not do that. Who knows? That would be weird. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about all I changed with all of that. Uh, I made Molly a bag, so that way you can drop things in just seemed logical to me and I also snap pointed just about everything discard piles have snap points all the creature places have snap points that's why I did the colored boxes to match the colors which by the way I changed the colors of the oppressor brood nexus and exploder because I don't I didn't like the the way they did that on the official one. And I also changed the spitball infector to just base teal. I don't know why. It made more sense to me in my head. There was nothing wrong with the official color, but I don't know. I just made it teal. Anyway, so yeah. But yeah, there's the, there's the whole thing. I snap pointed the whole board. That was a thing, but uh, it was a thing worth doing, in my opinion. As such, all the cave pieces I have not listening to the snap because they go by the middle, the middle of each of those tokens, and they don't exactly match up to the snap points on the board. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is, and that's going to have to be how it is. So, yeah. But anyway, I figure, why not? Let's get right into this. So, I already pre-determined which mission I figure would be interesting, and it's the one with the drones. Because we already saw th this is the one... That I was talking about to collect more fo five more kite and four apoca blooms, and that's the one that the uh, devs played. And then there was somebody else online who did this one with the eggs, again, which is fine. But uh, I figure I'll do this one with the drones because why not, right? You know. So okay. So. Oh, and I also made every bag, like the uh, exploration shuffle, the mineral shuffle, the weapon upgrade, and the hidden cave segments. I made those all random order. Why exactly they weren't to begin with, I don't know. I guess people are happy just shuffling bags, which is okay. But I figure I'll just make them random, that way that step is kind of eliminated. I'll probably shuffle the weapon upgrades just to do it, but 
Yeah. So anyway, let's get right down to this. So take this here, line that up like this. And this is how this is going to go, folks. Don't be surprised if there is a cut here. And what I like to do is lock those because why not? No need to have those being kind of free reign. Nitra. Two gold, two nitra, and hopefully they don't come out in that order so you can see the randomness in effect. Oh, there's one gold. Uh oh, did I mess something up? Yes, this goes there. Ooh. Well, the gold went in first, and they came out first, so there's that. Otherwise, the nitra should have came out first. So, you know, that's how randomness goes sometimes. Now, one loot bug, one barley bowl, one red sugar, four apoca bloom. And these ones we're not going to know until later. I'll put one there. Put one there. All these flare spots get a question mark. One there. And one there. And then each hidden cave segment also gets a question mark. You don't know exactly where in the hidden cave segment, so you just set them on there just so you know. Each hidden cave will have one guaranteed. And that's that. And then we just set the drones. One down here. And one over here. And I believe that's all that. Then we take a grunt and put it over next to the stalagmite. And I believe that's the cave set up. So now we go back a page because there's our objective. Click four pack blooms, apoca blooms, and the two drones, and then our mission specific event, which will be a thing. So now, what do I want to be? When I did before, when I did the two dwarves, I was the gunner and the engineer. So, I figure this time, either Driller or Scout, and I'm leaning more toward Driller, just because it seems really interesting, honestly, Driller play. Scout seems interesting too. Gunner, if you want my thoughts on the Gunner, I think the Gunner felt kind of weak, and that's mostly because of the bullet dice. Bullet dice, there's a lot of... There are no twos. I think it's the only die without a two other than the enemy die and the mineral die. And there are, I think, two blanks, two blank spaces, no twos. So honestly, the minigun felt a little weak, which is disappointing. You do get free actions using it though, so I guess it makes up for it with that. 
but then again bullets are also the more resistant type of damage so there's that kind of trade-off where you're kind of relying on your secondary then but anyway I'm gonna go with the driller so I'll just take a stack of primary Those three secondary, two, three, and my choice of secondary weapon. I already deal fire damage quite a bit. I also deal pretty good melee damage, nothing resists my melee. And move through walls, of course, because of the drill arms. Except it ends your turn, according to the book. The rule book, when you walk through a wall, you stop. You know, and that's that's your action. And you get to do three actions, so technically you could free dig three spaces. Like all of these black spaces here, you can essentially dig through and create your own cave. And pretty neat. That's how you access these hidden caves. You have to dig to them. But uh, what secondary do I want? Experimental plasma charger. Bulldog heavy revolver. Boomstick. Yeah, I don't think I want the plasma igniter. Because again, that does fire damage, which I already do. Semi-automatic, free action, which is a, which is honestly nice. That means you can shoot this thing as many times as you want to, only paying ammo cost. And of course, when you run out of ammo, that's it. Zukov SMGs, two bullets. Honestly, I think I'll do the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. Give myself a little bit of range. Plus it does piercing damage, which is always nice. And now I will draw myself a throwable. I'll shuffle that first. I got the frag grenade. Not bad. Draw myself a... Well, I'll just shuffle all these. Rock and stone card. And I guess I'll put myself in a drop pod too, why not? stone card for teamwork all dwarves may exchange any ammo well that's not very useful considering it is only me well and Bosco how the heck how does Bosco work I believe he's near the end deep dive Bosco uh, when you play a solo mission, you can bring Bosco. Bosco takes two actions right after pay, right after the player has taken his or her three. So before drawing event cards, okay. Can move up to three spaces. Ignores pits, creatures, dwarves, and stalagmites. As long as it doesn't end on a being or a stalagmite. I guess it can end on a pit though, that's good. Axe chop adjacent walls, stalagmites, loot bugs, or creatures. Minerals are left on the ground and must be picked up by a dwarf. Okay, that matches the game where Bosco can mine for you, but he doesn't actually collect any of the minerals. Attack with a light gun, roll one bullet die, range four. Okay. Attack with a rocket, one explosive die, range four. And that costs Bosco both actions interesting revive an unconscious dwarf regardless of distance Bosco sacrifices its circus to rush to your location and save you revive yourself stand up and receive one health and then take a new turn Bosco is lost for the rest of the mission interesting Bosco cannot be attacked or harmed by creatures cannot run out of ammo does not block line of sight or movement but creatures and dwarves cannot end their move on the same spot as Bosco. 
Bosco cannot pick up any minerals or objects, and it cannot reveal unknown pickups. Well, that kind of sucks, but I guess that makes kind of sense. It can, however, dig into hidden caves and reveal them. Okay, that's interesting. So it can reveal caves, but it cannot reveal hidden items. Interesting. Can assist with reaction shots, like a leech attack if within range. Okay. Well, I'll leave that on Bosco because I'm sure I'm gonna be going back to that. Anyway, I also figure I'll be playing on Hazard 2. Is there a quick hazard level? Because you have these helpful events. And depending on what hazard level you play at, you mix a certain amount of those into the deck. And honestly, from 1 to 2, it's really not that bad. But then hazard level 3, for some reason, only has 2. Like, I think there should be a... Like, maybe a 1, 2, 3, and 4. You know, like, one of them would have 4 helpful cards. You know, because 10 to 6... Alright... I mean, that's a decrease of four across the board, so I see what they're doing. Or maybe hazard level four could be no helpful cards, you know. It's some kind of extreme difficulty for the pro players or whatever, you know. I, I don't know. Anyway, I'll be doing hazard level two, so I'll mix six of those into the event deck. Get back to Bosco quick. Alright, so... One... Two, three, four, five, uh, six, okay, I guess we'll shuffle those, then we'll put those in there, and shuffle that, and now these are kind of pointless, I don't want to delete them, so I'll just set them off to the side there, and now we get to, oh, where does Bosco start? I don't know, I'm just going to guess. So, back to page 10, which is where we are. Bosco will go right here, because he's always like right out front of the drop pod. So, why not, right? Okay, so, now I get to take three actions. Which I can move, shoot, axe chop, throw a throwable, overclock call down a resupply pod, get supplies. And if I remember, if I drill into a wall with a mineral, that mineral is then lost because it's considered buried in rubble. At least that's what I remember. If I'm remembering that wrong, oh well. Because I haven't even began playing yet and this is already longer than it's supposed to be probably. So, I will move one, two, three. Flip that. Pocket Bloom, nice. So I will collect that. And you collect those by moving over them. So one, two, three. That's my second action. And you reveal them by moving next to them. So if that was one spot closer, I could have moved two flipped it and then decided if I wanted to collect it. But anyway, for my third and final action, I will axe into this wall and hopefully get the gold. And I do. So I will put that in Molly. And you take one of these and you put that there. And then you lock that in place because why not? And now there's an interesting choice on my next turn where I can go into the hidden cave segment or I can continue around and go that way. Which I think I'll do next time, honestly. So, Bosco. What's his range? A range of four. So he'll go one, two, three. Definitely not in range. So he will go one, two, three more. 
and that's his turn because he only gets two, right? Uh, yes. So now I flip an event card. Gun Inheritance. You spot a gaggle of glyphids chowing down on one of your former colleagues and you notice a shiny gun somewhere in the mess. Spend one ammo to take a new overclocked secondary weapon. Your secondary weapon is share ammo and ammo capacity. Do I want another secondary weapon? I already do flame and pierce. Am I happy with that, honestly? Do I need another damage type? I have a throwable too. Uh, I mean, it is spending one ammo. That's not terrible. No, I think I'll save my ammo. Because that just seems a little absurd to me right now. So, I'm not going to take that. Increase the swarm through my one. And uh, that's that turn done. Nothing all that interesting happened on that one. So, okay. So we'll go one, two, three. And then we will go one, two. And now I will melee. On double, yes, perfect. So this thing dies, perfect. Collect the nitra. Oh, yeah, new weapon upgrade, single hex lock. I believe that was my third action. One, two, three, yes, one, two, second, attack, third, beautifully, yay, okay, so, Bosco, go one, two, three, and now he will mine minerals, Ooh, got a double, oh yeah, that stays, Oh, do I want him to take out a stalagmite or open the cave? He'll take out the stalagmite, because why not? Then you roll a mineral die. That's a gold, I believe. Mm, yes. So we get a gold from over here and we put that here. And now we draw another event card. Unsettling rumblings. Increase the swarm threat by one. If a swarm it didn't trigger, draw another event card. Well, that sucks. Mission specific event. Place a web spear by tunnel exit 2. Now, what they mean by by, from what I'm getting, is actually on tunnel exit 2. That's that, so that's all that happens there, okay. That's not bad. Okay, so. Now I will collect these two, so one, two, it'll be one, two, three. And then for my second action, I will just drill right into here. 
lock that and then you move me there and then that opens this and now you can lock this and then you put this on the flare there's a pit that is a stalagmite a weapon upgrade goes here Terra comes down here. And what the hell is that? Uh, is that a web spitter? I think that's a web spitter. Mm. Where's the web spitter? There it is. That is not a web spitter. It is just a normal, everyday grunt. Okay. Oh, put the grunt there. It was a Mactera symbol, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's it for the cave symbols. So, that was action two. So, for action three, I will... But you can't bypass. But I guess I will shoot this grunt. Because why not, right? And I'll use the Bulldog Revolver. So discard an ammo. And then roll one piercing die. And I miss. Perfect. That's my action. So for Bosco's action, he will go one, two, three, and then he will attack the grunt. And that is rolling one bullet die. And he missed. Perfect. We're doing good on this grunt. That's his actions done. So, event. Get stuck between some hard jagged rocks. Lose one health to yank your foot out or take your time to carefully work your foot out. Become stunned. Oh man. Stunned. Uh, the dwarf starts his next turn with only one action. way increase the swarm threat by one. Ah, uh, I will lose a health. Oh, I can just delete that. Increase the swarm threat. And that's that. Okay, so first action. I guess I will move down here to get this upgrade is a resistance. Ignore resistance. We'll put that on the flamethrower. <clears throat> Action one. Action two. We'll go melee. Perfect. Kill the grunt. And then action three. Oh, I'm in range of the Mactera. That sucks. That perfect. That's what I was hoping it was. Now Bosco. If you look at the Mac Terra, they have resistance to bullets, so he will not attack with a bullet. But he will spend both of his actions, which I believe. Attack with rocket launcher. Roll one explosive die. Cost Bosco both of its actions to use the rocket launcher. But he will attack that. Roll one explosive die. That is one damage. They have two health. So we'll put one of these. I guess we'll put it up there. signify that the Mactera is damaged. That's 
Bosco. Put a swarm card aside to add to the next swarm. Perfect. Well, that's not good. Because we do have a swarm coming up here, if you look. Right there. Beautifully. But anyway, nothing else happened on that. So, action one. See, it re has a double resist axe, but since I am a driller, it says ignore any resistance against the pickaxe. So that's perfect. And that was my third action, which sucks. Let me get rid of that health. And now, Bosco, one, two, three. Will dig. Perfect. He did absolutely nothing. You missed the wall, Bosco. You missed the wall. Mission specific event. So that's another web shooter down by number two, I believe. So web spitter by tunnel is like two. Yep. Swarm threat doesn't advance, which I'm worried about because there is an exit right there. And I plan on digging right into there. Uh, but it is what it is. That sucks. I don't like it. Anyway, action one. I'm going to dig here. That is one. And then action two, I might, I'll just come down here and collect both of these. One, two. And then for action three, I will attack this front web spitter. Range of three. One, two, three. And if we're lucky, I'll get to show off the uh, thing you can do with attacks. So that is three dice I roll, right? Fire haze, yeah. Because I don't plan on using flaming ground, which I honestly could do, but I won't do. So roll those, and I definitely do. How much health do they have? They have two, so I'll use this. What you do is, I'm going to use this double flame on this web spitter, which kills it. And then you can track these other flames to adjacent spaces. And since that was only two away, because it still has to be in range, and I have a range of three, that was one, two, and this is three, so I can. It's kind of like, you know, like a garden hose, you know, like you're spraying it back and forth. So I'll put this flame on that one. And if that was a grunt, it would die. And then I could, if there was another grunt, like over on this question mark, I could take this one over too. But since I'm going to put both of these singles on that, that uh, one web spitter get rid of him. I have to spend an ammo. Better do that before I forget. And that is both of them down, which is beautiful. 
that couldn't have went any better. So, Bosco now. We'll go one, two, three. And I think I'm going to keep him there to block, kind of block exit two because we have a swarm coming up. And that's going to be really bad because it's going to be a double swarm. So, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. Anyway. Mission specific event, well, that was honestly, that couldn't have went any better. Um, I am perfectly okay with that. How many Apaka Blooms do we currently have? We have three. Ooh, we only need four. That means out of these four question mark, ooh. Out of these four question marks, One of them is an Apaka Bloom. Which, fine. The problem is, is that our luck was pretty good, and it's probably going to run low. But anyway, one, two, I'm just going to drill through this. That's my first action. Second action will be... It's a red sugar. So now I'm over here. Got the two drones. Ah. Uh, where do I think that other apocalypse? Do I think it's in the other cave? Or don't I? Hmm. I think it's going to be in the cave, so third action, one, two, whoops, lock, come up here, flip that, lock that, put this here, two stalagmites, weapon upgrade there, brood nexus, fantastic. Oh, man. Goddamn Brood Nexus. Too bad I couldn't roll the four against the Brood Nexus. Oh, well. And that's that. Bosco. He has a range of four. So if he moves on this red sugar, he'll still be in range. Sure. He'll roll one bullet die and do one damage to Mr. Web Spitter. They have a two, right? Yeah. Brood Nexus has five health. Five health. That is fantastic. Event card, mission specific event. We're getting a lot of mission specific events, let me tell you. That's another web spitter, better because it's on that one. I mean, I shouldn't be arguing because the swarm tracker is not advancing. My luck is heavily on my side playing this because this thing can advance sometimes quite often and it it leads to multiple swarms because the more it advances the more swarms you get but as you're seeing I'm not getting a lot of swarms at all but anyway first action you know honestly uh, first action you know what I'm going to stay here I'm not in the line of sight, right? And how you determine that is, is you draw a line from your 
spot to a spot, and I am in line of sight. So, first action, I'll move here. I mean, yeah, that kind of sucks. Well, first action, I'll collect this. Reroll a die. Yeah, put that on the main weapon too, why not? So I'm up here. And I will attack the Brood Nexus for action number two. That will be with the primary ammo. Two damage to Mr. Brood Nexus. Him. Third action. <sighs> yeah, I'll just spend another primary ammo. Oh my god, where was that the first time? <laughs> oh my god. Should have fire hazed, but whatever. Well, either way, he's dead. And when Mr. Brood Nexus dies, uh, the immobile Brood Nexus has no attack, it can spawn glyph grunts. Once the Brood dies, two grunts spawn, one in its place, the other adjacent to it as close to the nearest dwarf as possible. These grunts take no damage from the attack. So, one in its place, and one adjacent closest to the nearest dwarf. I mean, that could go here. I guess it's my choice, right? I'll put it there. Two grunts spawn. Do I get the draw? I do not get to draw a rock and stone card, so okay. Bosco, he's gonna use both of his actions to explode this web spitter. Yes, perfect. Good job, Bosco. <clears throat> Event card. Bug bomb. Increase the swarm threat by two, but no further than to the next swarm space, which means it only increases one. And here we go. Oh boy. Well, I'm definitely going to get attacked at least twice, which is not ideal. Swarm. <laughs> Spawn one Praetorian by tunnel exit one, facing as if to move towards the nearest target. So it will spawn here and will face like that. How exactly is that? Yes. Because the, the, the Praetorian it has armor. If you notice the resistance, but if you attack it from behind, then you can ignore that and you get free range of damage. So I guess it's going to act like it's going this way, even though it's going to have to go all the way around, technically. But anyway, then we have this other one. Spawn one Mactera by exit one. And that will go here because that's the quickest way. And three grunts by exit two. So that'll be one, two, three, and then one, oh, those are swarms, yeah. and then what happens with swarms is, after you place all the creatures, now they all activate, starting from the top, so the grunts go first which, fantastic. So, we might as well get these out of the way first. And you see they roll one attack die, and the exclamation point is a no effect, which is, which is 
good. Need to hope for those or the blank. Perfect, that's one down. Two, that's a lost health. And now these ones, they get to move. And they have a movement of three. So that will be one, two, three. Because they can walk on cliffs, or not cliffs, pits. One, two, three. One, two, they can't end on the same spot as another one. <coughs> so, fantastic. One, two. I guess I'll move down here. Yeah, why not? Uh, spitter, Mactera, move three. Stalagmite, and all their movements would have ended on a stalagmite. Praetorian, they can tunnel, right? It's only the oppressor. Uh, always faces in the direction it moved. Towards the nearest dwarf, I mean, but yeah, it has to go around. So, one, two, three. Yes, okay, beautiful. They all moved, that's the turn done. So, great, now it's my turn. Action one. I will... That's an Apaka Bloom. That's an Apaka Bloom. That would, be, that would be perfect. So I will move here. It's not. Oh. Uh, so that was one, two, three. And then for action two. Supply will have five primary, six secondary,
Six secondary. One health. Not exactly as much health as, health as I was hoping. But uh, anyway, Bosco. Bosco will attack these grunts. We'll attack these two. One, that's one action. Two, perfect. So, two, two dead grunts. Good job, Bosco. Another event. One grunt digs out on an empty ground space adjacent to you and attacks. But first, the dwarves within two range of the grunt get a free reaction shot. An empty ground space adjacent to you. I mean, it could go there, it could go here, but is this my choice? Because if it is, it's going to go right here and then Bosco will get a reaction shot and miss perfect and attacks and it hits beautiful okay at least the swarm threat didn't go up one Anyway, okay, so, first action will be to resupply, so I will take two secondary, that's all I can, one health, one health, uh, three primary, sucks. I was hoping for more primary. I was hoping for more primary. Oh, man. Second action. specifically block movement <sighs> dwarves cannot move in the walls cannot move on to spaces containing a creature okay okay So I can't move on to him, so action two will be an axe chop. It's a double, that's interesting. So this one's dead, definitely. And then I will, it's kind of pointless to dig there. Take out the stalagmite, I guess. Perfect, I guess. Action three. One, two, three. <coughs> now Bosco will attack. Second action. Can't reveal. Where's a red sugar? One, two, three. You were blocking the red sugar, Bosco. I didn't know it was there. Because that actually kind of works. All right. Event. 
One exploder emerges at exit one, then all creatures activate. All right, so Grunt, Exploder, Mectera. And the resupply pods do not block movement, if I remember reading that correctly. Uh, activate all creatures. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's the Grunt's Exploder next, right? Yeah. That wait, Praetorian movement three. Okay, beautiful. All right. So action one, I will do the red sugar. Come on, double. Damn. Alright. Red sugar. And how does red sugar work? I should have stayed on that page. Red sugar. When axe chop, discard the red sugar and add up to three lost health. Okay. That'll be two. Action one, action two, one, two, three. And then action three will be to shoot Mr. Mactera with my revolver. One, two, three, four, yes. One damage. Doesn't resist piercing, right? No. <clears throat> Bosco. Bosco will, you know what? Spend both actions to... Could have threw my grenade. Oh well. Spend both actions to roll an explosive. And he would have killed it. Good for you, Bosco. Closing in. Increase the swarm threat by one. If a swarm did not trigger, activate all creatures. So, one, two. One, two, three. Uh, exploder. One, two, three. predicament here. Mm. So, what will now happen is
this spot here. And then is it the one next to it? I don't think it is. Maybe it would be this one here. Which kind of sucks, but okay. Anyway, so actually, I have the complete because, yeah, does it? The resistance doesn't matter. Because that's what this, that's what that is. Ignore any resistance the target creatures have against this weapon type. Perfect. Okay. So, one. Action one will be to spend an ammo. Flame dice. Two, three, four. Which health do they have? Six. Okay. So action two will then be spend another one. Just need to remember he's at four. That's beautiful. Five, six kills them. And then, because I can move the damage, I get to say what I did with those grunts. So, there's one flame on that one, and one flame on that one. Now, killing a Praetorian, when it is killed, the dwarf dealing the killing blow gets to draw a rock and stone card as a morale boost. Perfect. Look at the next event card and then shuffle the deck if you want to. And that's a free action. So anyway, now I get to now I get to move. Because that was only two actions to do that. So one, two, three. Actually, hold on. One, two. So I'm right where Bosco is. Barley bulb. Do I move there? Yeah, why not? We would collect the barley bulb. One, two, three. Barley bulb. Discard the bulb as it is collected and draw a rock and stone card. So I get another one. Reroll any enemy attack rolled against any other player. But since I'm the only player, I'm going to say those count toward me. Otherwise, they're kind of pointless. So anyway, that's my turn. Bosco will move one, two. Three. I was going to say, where's the last... The exploders on it. So, okay. That means we know that's the Apocabloom, which kind of sucks, but hey, whatever. Anyway, his next attack will be to attack the Exploder. And completely whiff. Perfect. Good job, Bosco. Now I will use my Rock and Stone. I should have a discard for the Rock and Stone, now that I'm thinking about it. But hey, whatever. Look at the next event card. And then shuffle the deck if you want. So before we draw one, we'll look. One web spitter emerges at exit one, and then all creatures activate. That's not terrible, so we'll just do that. Web spitter first, and then exploder. Cannot shoot through stalagmites, it's good. One, two, three. One, two, woo. Come on, exploder. There you go. And what the exploder does when 
an explorer is killed or gets activated while adjacent to a dwarf. Okay. You would think once it moves and then is adjacent to a dwarf, it would then activate, but I guess not. So. Okay. So that's that. Now it's my turn. So action one. I guess to move back here and then attack the exploder. Perfect. Kill the exploder. And because it doesn't explode, you know, it doesn't take out the walls like some of the enemies. Anyway, that's one. Oh, that was action two. One was to move there, and then two was to shoot. Uh, action three. One, two, three. We know that's the Apocabloom. And now, Bosco. One, two, three. Spitter. Perfect. Put a swarm card aside to add to the next swarm. You know, all our swarms are double swarms. It's a good thing this thing's moving kind of slow. Uh, okay, so. Like the Apocabloom. Be one, two, three. One, two, yeah, because I can't. Right, perfect. Alright, so now I will bash the web spitter. Double. Okay. Not that that's needed. drop pod because that's it. We got our four apocablooms, we got the two drones. Four apocablooms, two drones. One, two, three. Bosco will go one, two, three. And he will not move again. Because he's kind of blocking that exit right now, so. Yeah. So, another event. Tough spot. You spot a lost ammo crate left behind from an earlier mission. Unfortunately, you're surrounded by jagged scalpel like crystals. Lose one health to get the ammo crate and fully restock a weapon of your choice. That's honestly kind of pointless right now. And I did not get to use my flame wall, which I probably could have used once when I was down, down in here with all the grunts. But it kind of, you know, like what was the point, honestly? Uh, and yeah, that was that mission. Again, I think it's a fun game. I think it would be better with probably more players. Because I'll be honest, I think just playing with me solo with Bosco was easier than when I did it solo with two dwarves. And I think that's because... 
less of, I mean, event cards are being drawn more fre frequently with just me, but I get to move after every event card, whereas with more dwarves, you're drawing more event cards and not moving all the dwarves, which puts them more at risk, which I think makes it more hard. So, the more dwarves you have, I think the harder the game is. Like Solo, with just my dwarf here, the Driller, and Bosco, I felt that was kind of easy, honestly. Probably should have played on Hazard 3, but it is what it is. So, anyway, that was Deep Rock Galactic, the board game. And what I wanted to do for this, and I completely forgot until right now, well, not right now, but after collecting that last Apocabloom is when I remembered. What I wanted to do is I wanted to have a tablet on the table. I wanted a tablet. And I didn't have one. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a soundtrack. Send this thing up on the YouTube. And then you type, uh, I don't know, DRG into the abyss. I believe is one of the songs and I wanted to have this playing as background music uh, maybe it's a good thing I didn't try to do that because apparently this is not playing okay let's track 8 <laughs> but yeah I wanted to have a soundtrack While I was exploring, moving around, I wanted to change it to a combat track during combat. I didn't even remember it then. It is what it is. Oh well. At least I remembered here at the end, right? Ooh. So, yeah. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this for what it is. I like the game well enough. Hey, can't wait to get it on the table. Play it that way. So, yeah. Anyway, this is Mink. Until next time, goodbye.